Well, here we go. Uh, lesson 23. We're going to wrap up section 7.6. Well, first it's time to visit a couple of old friends from your algebra days. Uh, quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Normally we try to solve that by factoring into two binomials and we set them equal to 0. But if it's unfactorable, we use the quadratic equation and the negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so in today's lesson, what we're going to be talking about are trigonometric equations, trino uh, trino trigonometric trinomial equations that can't be factored. And we'll have to use a quadratic formula to solve them. So here's a set of instructions that's going to come with each one of these problems. Use the inverse trigonometric functions to find the solution to the equations that are in the given interval and approximate the solutions to four decimal places. And so they'll always say approximate the solutions to four decimal places. Um, the interval is really important, so I'll, I'm always making sure you understand whether we want the answer between 0 and 2 pi, but quite often we'll cut the circle in half, and you're going to like it when we cut the circle in half. Well, here's our first one. Let's approximate the solutions to four decimal places. 2 cosine squared alpha plus 3 cosine alpha minus 1 equals 0. We want all solutions between 0 and 2 pi. The first thing you'd probably try to do is factor it, and it, it's not factorable obviously, because we're trying to use the quadratic formula in this lesson. So this is not factorable. We'll have to use quadratic formula. So it's important to understand what a, b, and c are. We're going to leave the cosine out of it. a is 2, b is 3, c is negative 1. We're going to set cosine alpha equal to the quadratic formula using a, b, and c that are listed here. So it's cosine alpha is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 3 squ square root of 3 squared minus 4ac minus 4 times 2, 9 times negative 1, all over 2a. So that works its way out to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. So here's our two solutions, negative 3 plus the square root of 17 over 4, and negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 4. Let's see how this plays out. So we have to work out both sides of here. I'm going to work the left side first, negative 3 plus the square root of 17 over 4, cosine alpha equals this. It's really important that you write cosine alpha equals 0 0.2808. Since we don't know the angle, we use inverse cosine function and we come up with 1.2862. Now our reference angle then will be 1.2862. I want to be that many radians off the x-axis in quadrant 1 and 4 because those are the two quadrants in which cosine is positive. So our first answer happens to be the reference angle and our second answer is 2 pi minus 1.2862 and that comes out to be 4.9970. So there's two of our answers, uh, one in quadrant 1 and one in quadrant 4. Now let's go work the other side. So now we do negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 4 and we get cosine alpha equals negative 1.7808 and you do the inverse cosine of that and you get an error. Um, there is no angle whose cosine, or sine for that matter, is less than negative 1 or greater than 1. And so because negative 1.7808 is less than negative 1, there is no solution. So we only ended up with two solutions here. You could end up with four solutions if both sides works. Uh, usually you need a big value for A for that to happen. This is really often, that, quite often, that one side works and produces two solutions, and the other side doesn't work. But if you get a decent sized value for A, You'll get four solutions here quite often. So we just ended up with two solutions on this one. Let's move on. Sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta minus 2 equals 0. We want all answers between 0 and 2 pi. First thing you try to do is factor it, but it won't factor, obviously, because I'm trying to make you work with quadratic formula. So our a is going to be 1, our b will be negative 2, and our c will be a negative 2. And I devoted an entire slide to showing you what I just told you in the previous one. A is 1, B is negative 2, and C is negative 2. Now let's do the quadratic formula. All right, so negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Put all that in there, you end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. The square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3. Now because I can take a, one, a 2 out of all three pieces, I can reduce this down to 1 plus or minus square root of 3. Unless you can take the same value out of all three pieces of this puzzle, don't try factoring. So we end up with sine theta equal 1 minus square root of 3 and sine theta equals 1 plus square root of 3. So we could possibly end up here with four solutions. Let's find out what happens. 
So let's work the left side there. Sine theta equals 1 minus square root of 3, which is a negative 0 0.7321. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. We do the inverse sine, and we get um, theta is equal to negative 0.8213. So that becomes our reference angle, and we add it on to pi and we should subtract it from 2 pi because remember sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4 so take the reference angle add it on to pi that'll get you your quadrant 3 angle and then subtract that reference angle from 2 pi for your quadrant 4 angle well there's two of our answers let's go to the other side and what happens quite often here the other side doesn't work out 1 plus square root of 3 is 2.7 2.7 is way too big take the inverse sine of it you'll get an error so we only ended up with the two answers that we had on the left side uh, what was that? 3.9629 and 5.4619. So two solutions. You could end up with four, but again, the A has to be a pretty good sized value for you to end up with four solutions here. Well, here's the next one. Four tangent squared beta plus six tangent beta plus one equals zero. But look at the range. We only want the answer between negative pi over two and pi over two. Two things. We've cut the circle in half, and we're perfectly fine reporting negative answers which is not true in the previous examples where it was always 0 to 2 pi. We had to report positive answers. So A is 4, B is 6, C is positive 1. Let's go ahead and set up our quadratic formula and figure out what tangent is. So tangent beta, and I want to stress that again, right? Tangent beta equals uh, negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 4 times 1 over 2 times 4. So I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 8. And I know you can re simplify or that radical 20, but I see no sense in doing that. It's not going to get rid of the denominator, so I don't bother. I write tangent beta equals negative 6 plus square root of 20 over 8. And tangent beta equals negative 6 minus square root of 20 over 8. So that about tangent is it's it's definable for all values to plug into it. We're perfectly fine putting in 2.6 and taking inverse tangent. So here's my bad English of the day. With tangent, or rather inverse tangent, you never get no solution. And so both sides are guaranteed to work. However, we're, we've cut the circle in half, so we're only going to get one answer on both sides. And with tangent, you're guaranteed everything works. All right, so negative 6 plus square root of 20 over 8 yields negative 0.1910. Inverse tangent of that. And you get your first answer is zero, negative 0 0.1887. That's one of our answers. There's no reference angles to go hunting around for. Since we cut the circle in half, we're good. Let's go to the other side. We have tangent beta equals negative 6 minus square root of 20 over 8. You, that comes out to be negative 1.3090. Inverse tangent of that, and you get negative 0.98184. So those are two answers down there in blue. Um, had this been a sine or cosine problem, the right side wouldn't have worked. Uh, but you can take the inverse tangent of anything. All right, sine x times the quantity 12 sine x plus 1 equal 1. And notice we cut the circle in half again, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It, it, don't set sine x equal to 1 and 12 sine x plus 1 equal to 1. You can't do that. That only works if you, the right side was equal to 0. So we're going to have to distribute the sine x and track the one to the other side and then we'll see what we can do with this all right so we have uh, distribute the sine x you get 12 sine x sine squared x plus sine x to track the one minus one equals zero um, you can try to factor this one actually i think it actually does factor but i'm going to go ahead and do quadratic formula because i got to tell you quadratic formula always works all right so our a is 12 our b is 1 our c is negative 1 so sine x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 12 times negative 1 all over 2 times 12. So that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 24. Because 49 is a perfect square, that tells us we could have factored this one, but who cares? The quadratic formula always works. So we have negative 1 plus 7 over 24 and negative 1 minus 7 over 24. So notice I kept the sine x all the way to the end. If you don't hit an inverse function on these problems, I guarantee you have the wrong answer. So sine x equals 0.25. And take the inverse sine of 0.25, and I end up with 0 0.2527. So the angle is 0.2527. And that's the only one we need, because we cut the circle in half. 
Let's go to the other side. Sine x equals negative 1 minus 7 over 24. That ends up being sine x equals a negative 1 third. Inverse sine of negative 1 third, and you end up with point, negative 0.3398. And there's your two answers. X is equal to 0.2527 and negative 0.3398. When you cut the circle in half, we don't have to get reference angles. We don't have to hunt around. Whatever your calculator says after you hit inverse, sine, cosine, or tangent, that is your answer. And that's all we have to do. Hey, we did it. We only found two solutions because we cut the circle in half. Well, that wraps up Lesson 23, and that wraps up Section 7.6. So get going on the homework.